The search just now underway again as we come on the air tonight. It is daybreak in that part of the world, that key part of the Indian Ocean off Australia. Right there, the route most likely taken by that missing jet and the area they're most concentrating on tonight, where the satellites show those possible debris marks from the plane this week. And just look at the arsenal this evening, 32 aircraft, 9 helicopters, 27 ships. ABC's David Wright, the only American reporter this week on board that secret naval plane over the Indian Ocean. Tonight, he reports on the infrared cameras, the radar being deployed. We have team coverage on it all, including your questions answered right here. We repeatedly heard from you, why no submarines? But we do begin here with David as they search again. David, good evening. Good evening, David. As dawn breaks here in Australia, the search effort has already resumed. More search planes joining the fleet today, more ships headed into the region as well. Today, six Australian and New Zealand aircraft will be searching an area about 22,000 square miles. That's about the size of West Virginia. This whole operation involves state-of-the-art technology and painstaking effort. Six search planes out from dawn until dusk, dropping marker buoys, plotting coordinates, and scanning the waves. But so far, coming up empty. The eye in the sky pinpointed these objects out in the open ocean. The best lead yet. The smaller one, just 15 feet long, the length of a car. But getting a closer look is proving to be difficult. It's about the most inaccessible spot uh, that you could imagine on the face of the Earth. The ocean here is dynamic. Watch this boat, tossed by the high seas. The waves up to 20 feet high. Winds howl, currents tear in different directions. That makes tracking any debris a challenge. The search planes have sensitive radar, infrared cameras, and high-res optical lenses. But as we witnessed yesterday aboard that U.S. Navy P-8, in choppy seas, a pod of dolphins can look like debris. From a distance, the only reliable instrument, distinctly low-tech, the human eye. Call it the Mark 1 Mod 1 eyeball. Sorry. Say again? The Mark 1 Mod 1 eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's old fashioned, but it works. Eventually, there may be eyes underwater, too. Submersibles like the Remus 100, used to help locate Air France 447. This is a costly endeavor. The cost of the U.S. taxpayers alone, about $2.5 million so far. But I think most would agree. It's a small price to pay for answers. David? David Wright tonight, thank you. And this evening, for the first time, we're hearing from the family of the lead crew member on board that flight. Their anguish and their anger now. ABC's Bob Woodruff on the ground again for us tonight in Kuala Lumpur. This is the home of Patrick Gomez, the chief steward of Flight 370. Three daughters, one son, a grandson, and his wife Jackie says she keeps calling his cell phone, praying he is still alive. I call him on the phone, I send him SMSs, hoping that he would reply. There have been vigils and prayers from countries around the world, Pakistan to China to Malaysia and more. But there is also a growing okay. anger that the Malaysian government is not being honest. One official kept calling the families next of kin. They keep telling us the same thing over and over and over again, but there's nothing new. And I agree with my mom, I think we all need closure. Raphael is still just waiting for his grandfather. He has no idea what's happened. What are you, you going to tell Raphael? Let him think that grandpa's at work, because he still doesn't understand. Why is it that Patrick was on that plane? God has plans for all of us. So maybe God has a good plan. Since he went missing, Patrick's family has been burning this candle so he can find his way home, whether he survives or does not. Bob Woodruff, ABC News, Kuala Lumpur.